Hi guys, this is Jimmy McIntyre here. Welcome to this tutorial on how to replace the sky from one image with the sky from another image. I'm making this tutorial for a website called lightstalking.com, which I think is one of the best photography websites in the world, and I encourage you to check them out and see all the great tutorials and articles on there. In this tutorial, we're actually going to look at the gradient tool in Photoshop and see how quickly and seamlessly we can blend two exposures so that we can create a balanced sky when previously there wasn't one. Anyone who's followed my video tutorials will have seen these photos before, these two exposures, because I used them to demonstrate how powerful luminosity masks are in digital blending. And if you're curious about that, you'll see a link to the digital blending tutorial below here. Now, we're going to use the sky from this image and we're going to blend it seamlessly into this image so that we come up with a balanced foreground and a balanced sky. This'll, this is what it'll look like roughly. So firstly, to do that we have to take our two images, which is over and under, and drag them into Photoshop. And they'll open up separately. And I'll take the Move tool and I'll drag the underexposed image and put it on top of the overexposed image like that and they should be lined up nicely. Now I'm going to open up a layer mask, but I'm going to hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac so that the darker layer becomes invisible. Now I'm going to open up a gradient tool here. However, you might see the, see the paint bucket tool instead, which is usually the primary option. So just a right mouse button click and that'll appear. Make sure your opacity is set to 100 and you have the linear gradient option selected there. The foreground should be set to white and the background set to black. If you have colors selected there, which you shouldn't have, um, you can press these, this button here and it will make the default foreground and background colors. What we have to do is make a mask, a gradient mask. And to do that, we simply have to draw a line like this. However, sometimes we might be a little bit wonky and it's not exactly what we want. So it's better if you hold down shift and you drag down with your left mouse button and that'll create a straight line. That's how you draw a straight line in Photoshop. Oops. And at the last second, I let go and it went wonky. And there you go. That's it. That's how quickly it, you can blend multiple exposures in Photoshop using the gradient tool. Now clearly this wouldn't work on a lot of images because you essentially need a flat horizon. It does a very similar job to a, a graduated neutral density filter. But if you don't have one of those, then this is a good option too. Now, I'm finished with the tutorial, the how-to, but now I'd like to explain why it works as it does. And so I'm just going to remove the mask and I'm going to open a new layer on top here. And I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool. And if you press the paint bucket tool on the new layer, it'll paint a uniform color, which is white. However, if you go to the gradient tool and you draw a line like this, it will create a gradient from white, which is your foreground color, to black, which is your background color. And the smooth gradient is a range of grays. And if you're familiar with masking, which I hope you are, you'll know that white equals visible, black equals invisible, and the different tones of gray vary. So the lighter the gray, the more visible the mask will be, and the darker the gray, the more invisible the mask will be. If masking is completely new to you, on this video now you'll see a link appear to a tutorial which will show you what masks are in Photoshop and how you can use them. Now when we're masking, this is essentially what our mask is going to look like. So when we're masking, and we open up a mask again, and we create the gradient mask like that, we can press Alt or Option on a Mac and we can open up the layer mask like this and we can see our layer mask. So everything's white here. So that means everything on this underexposed image is visible. And that's why the sky is visible. However, oops, my mistake. Everything around here, where there, is, where there are gray tones, is partially visible. And of course, the darker, the more invisible it is. And then it's completely black. So this means this layer down here is completely black. In other words, this layer is visible. And that's exactly what it looks like. And this is a smooth blend here. Now, if we didn't use the gradient tool, we can create a layer mask instead. And we could do a line right on the horizon, right here. And we can just paint it black. 
and you'll see that there's not a smooth transition at all, not compared to the gradient mask. So that's why it's more beneficial to use a gradient mask when you have a flat horizon to make those smooth transitions. Now I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you have by all means feel free to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and just say hello through my blog at throughstrangelenses.com. Thank you very much and see you next time.